Daniel is in Nashville. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Anthony. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, sure. Man. What's up? Um, so my wife got my wife and I got married about a year and a half ago. We graduated about two years ago, um, and we set a goal for about five years. We want to move outside of the United States um, to just share the, the love of Christ with a place that doesn't know it yet. And so right now we're living in Nashville. We're both teachers here, and we were going to move closer to home uh, to New Mexico. And so our plan was to buy a house for about five years and then to sell it and then leave. Um, but just with the way the market has kind of exploded over the last uh, six months, 12 months, 18 months, um, we are just not quite sure what to do. I've, I've run some numbers in an Excel spreadsheet, so I have my own idea. But I was, I was curious about what you would do if you were in my shoes. What are y'all going to do in Nashville? I mean, I you're le they're leaving Nashville. To I mean, not Nashville, Mexico. to New Mexico. Are y'all going to be missionary work, or are you going to still teach in, in We Mexico? plan on continuing to teach okay. for, for five years still. It's okay, so we're building up a, a war chest to do the mission field after five years. Is that right? Yeah, just growing in maturity okay. in our marriage and professionalism, all that stuff. Hmm. Good for you. Okay, good. Well, obviously, if the housing market continues like it is for five years, which it won't, um, you would be more than okay buying a house, right? Definitely. Because you'd, make a, bazil you'd make a bazillion dollars. But I'm not yeah. assuming that's going to happen, and I'm guessing you aren't either. That's right. So what is your fear of buying a house and holding it five years? Um, I'm just not sure what the timelines are for, like, when it's better to rent versus when it's better to buy some some things say two years, some things say, you know, you should have it at least seven years on the higher end. But um, I think after running the numbers, I think five years is safe. But what I don't want to happen is like the the same sort of bubble that happened like 12 years ago, 10 years ago or so. Um, and then, you know, we, because people are overpaying about, you know, 15 or 20,000 asking price. Um, and so, yeah, I don't want to overpay by, you know, 20,000. And then the uh, the house is not worth as much and we end up paying more um trying to just like resell the house than we would have if we had rented for five years okay none of us know what the market is going to do exactly and um but That's i i, I do game. i do not do anything financially predicated on the crash and the end of the world mm -hmm. okay if i'm going to do that then we just need to buy bullets and water and a tent <laughs> Right. So I don't, I don't, but could real estate uh, offset, if you go back and actually look at the numbers and, and the bubble of 2008 was a real estate bubble that burst. Right. It was the first yeah, one. Yeah, you know, some of the variables going into yeah, it Other are, than the Great Depression, different. it's the only time we've had a, we've had some economic downturns, but we've never had a real estate downturn like 2008 was. But here's the interesting thing. In almost every market within five years, it had fully recovered. Okay. I mean, look at the history of it. You can look at the, that's a database thing. That's not a feeling. And so, you know, I remember saying, well, you know, the people saying, well, you know, Scottsdale, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh my God. You know, it was artificially high. It dove. Vegas took a big drop. It was the fastest growing city in America and it dropped way down. Most areas dropped down. It was the first time we'd seen homes, single family homes actually go down in value in some of these markets. They were all back in three years. Okay. They were. And that was a dramatic one. Now, so now the question then is, how much money are you going to make or are you in a stagnant market? So here's two, here's a couple of numbers if you want to nerd out further on it just for the fun of it. Get with the real yeah. estate agent out there. And number one, you got to be debt free, right, Anthony? Yep. You got to yep. have your emergency fund. Yeah. Got to have your down payment before we even talk about this. But assuming you've done that, you put it on a 15-year fixed rate where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. These are the guidelines we use around here so you don't buy too much house and you don't buy a house when you're broke. But once you're doing all that, then you can look at two statistics with your real estate agent out there. And uh, I would say pre-2020, I wouldn't use 2020 numbers or 2021 numbers because they are they are unusually high in terms of how fast properties have gone up in value. There's very few times in history that you can look back and see this much escalation in value or cost on property uh, this fast. So I would say, you know, like 18, 17, 18, 19 
in this market, pull up on the MLS for me, ask the real estate agent what the average appreciation rate was in the neighborhood that you're considering. Okay. Okay. And then that will tell you if you're going to make enough during your holding period to offset your costs. Okay. So you would just take that rate and then... That would be the rate I would years. use because that's probably more average than what we're experiencing right now. That's, a, you know, okay. what we're experiencing right now, I don't think is going to continue for five years. That's unrealistic. I could be wrong, but I don't. I don't think so. The second thing you can ask them for, and this might be the most important number in this whole conversation, is ask them for average DOM de prior to 2020, average days on the market. How hot okay. a market is this? And if the average DOM on a house, the price range you're looking at is 270 days, that's nine months. Don't buy. Mm -hmm. You're going to get stuck. Okay. But if the average gotcha. DOM is nine days prior to 2020, then that market was hot before the pandemic. I see. And, you know, you got markets that were that way already. They were already running 20-day, 30-day, 40-day DOMs. And if you've got an average days on the market, then that market's going to move. You'll be able to get out of the house. I'm not as concerned about how much you're going to make on it. I'm fairly comfortable you're going to make some money. But I am concerned you can't sell it when you get ready to leave and you end up with a rental yeah, property in the States and you're on the mission field, oh, shoot me, get it over with. I hate that idea. <laughs> Sounds good. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, good question, and thank you for your willingness to serve the Lord in that way. Very, very cool.